In Vancouver, I don't know, because the only golf course I've ever been to was for a marriage. Or a, a wedding, I should say. But it was they, it was nice. It was I didn't do any golfing, but the catering was pretty good. For the nuptials, did they tee off and like you're like, hey, you're like a hole in one to me. They did not. Um, I don't oh. think that they golf either. <laughs> is that not a is that a Canadian thing getting married at a at a country club? I, I think it's just I think it may be just a Ryan Gary's um, circle of elite elitist friends. I do believe uh, that um, it was a situation where the bride's father was like in good at the country club. So they were like, let's do the wedding there. Hello there mm. John what do you mean by in good? You know, like he'd been a member for a long time. Oh, um, side note, we're playing match play if you're okay with that, just in case one of us has a complete meltdown on a hole. Right, match play is like if you, whoever gets the lowest score on the hole gets a point. Yes. Okay, yeah, no problem. All right. Can I can um, I raise the stakes for you a little bit? Stake me. I don't know what my punishment would be for losing, but I know what I want if I win. I want you to be forced to move Slay the Spire to the A tier on your <laughs> tier list. And that's that is merciful because it deserves to be an S. But to to take it out of C or wherever it is right now and at least move it to A, it would do us both a favor. I mean that you're asking for a lot. You understand that, right? Well, that's I would I, it's, it's I would consider it, but I, but I need like a, a an as equal ask for you. Have you thought about something like that that you would goes against your moral compass that <laughs> you would be willing to do? I don't know. I don't even know what it would be, honestly. I have to think mm -hmm. about it. That's for sure. Um. All right. How about this? If if I win, you need to send me a Twitter video of you saying that Slay the Spire is exactly where it belongs on my um, roguelike tier list. Sure, I can do that. Okay. I wish you best of luck and this uh, gentleman's agreement. Uh, and just for the record, you can do whatever you want. I am I do not use resin putting. Do you? Oh no, I'm not going to use. I was going to say the same thing. Okay. Good. Well, good luck. Good luck to you as well. Um. What's your what's your uh, capability in this game? I would say uh, around your level, <laughs> based on the first <laughs> shot. <laughs> okay. um, I would I in an eighteen hole round, I tend to shoot around a minus two. I would say, which is perfect. Oh, oh nice shot. <laughs> Can I ask you about your um, your golf cosmetic attire in the yes. game? Is this something that you would wear in real life? Um, I, so this, I'm not sure if your chat's ready for this because we have a different sort of aesthetic and atmosphere. I don't think I can wear khakis anymore. Okay. Why? The, the blank is too big now. Anytime I see a picture of myself from behind in khakis, I'm like, I can't wear these. I need to what? wear darker pants to minimize the okay, size of my butt. Get out of this bunker and on our way. Really? Yes, it's, it's large. Like, has it always been that size? I'd say it's always had a certain degree of uh, prodigiousness, sure. But uh, this, it, ever since going harder on the Peloton, it's definitely been taken to the next level. Can you tell that? Like, have you had to get a different pant size? Well, it's made pants harder to shop for because my waist has gotten like four or five inches smaller. And I think my, my hips have gotten larger. So it's almost like, I don't know, I got to get like a custom pant or something like that. But instead, I just tighten my belt really, really tight. Wait, so are you, are you looking like an hourglass walking around? I'd say I've got a little like a Mewtwo type situation going on, sure. Without being weird, champ, because it wouldn't be weird, champ, for you to tell me, but I know maybe you wouldn't want to tell everyone watching. Mm. What was your previous? Um, and also, do Canadian pants come like yeah, we, 32, we 32? Which is hilarious. <laughs> but, um, so what was your what was your previous? Let me put it this way: uh, two September's ago, when it was my daughter's first birthday, I got fitted for a Korean traditional outfit called a hanbok that my in-laws yeah. wanted me to wear for some pictures. And when I got fitted, they were like, what's your waist size? And I was like, I'm a 32. And then they looked, oh, 
They looked at me and were like, mm, I'm not sure about that. And I was like, I know, I know I have a double chin, but I'm a 32. I think I know like my own size. And then they gave me a 32 and it did not, like I was able to get it buttoned up, but I had to say like sucked in the whole time. And then they were like, how do those fit? And I was like, they're perfect. So I think at that time I was probably a 35, maybe a 36. Now, Is your first digit a two? I don't, with my 32s, I need to tighten the belt like crazy. So I'd, I'd say I'm probably a 30 now. Dude, that's like... <laughs> I know, it's getting a little It's silly. like what I wore in like grade school or something, you know? It's what I wore probably in like ninth grade too. Okay, yeah. he's got two feet to go here. But you said, the interesting thing you said that I didn't really compute, I'm not going to say I didn't believe you, but you said your hips got bigger. Well, I, the, the hip measurement, I think, got larger because my butt is larger now. But that, your hip doesn't measure your, your bottom. Well, what's, what, what would you call it then? I can't say that. Here's the thing, okay? I don't want to swear because I know you maintain a family-friendly environment, so I don't want to say the A word, but I'm like a 34-year-old man. I don't feel comfortable saying butt. And I'm not from England, so what I'm about, not going to say what, bum. Why don't you say pasty? Pos, my posterior, I, I suppose. No, pasty. I'm not going to say pasty. That just doesn't... It sounds like a, my daughter ordering at a okay. restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't wear khakis. Let me guess what you do wear. Lulu Lemons because they stretch. Uh, I did wear some Lulu Lemons for a little bit. People told me that... I previously said I keep blowing out the crotch area of the jeans. Like a, a normal pair of jeans would last me like six to 10 months before there would be a rip in the, in the crotch region. People said you gotta get these ABCs from Lululemon. They're basically like a softer pant that has a, a gusseted crotch region, so it's unrippable. That was an amazing approach, by the way. Dude. I, I forget the shot. You you blow through jeans six to eight months. Bro, I got I wear jeans like five years. I know it's not right. Do you well? What let me let doing? me ask you something because I want to start from base principles here. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We get them in the on the green. Um, nice, nice. How often do you wear like when you wear jeans? Do you wear a different pair of jeans every day, or you wear the same pair of jeans for like one week plus? I may wear a pair of jeans once a month. Yeah, and then okay. in the winter, maybe like three or four times a month. Wait, so you, are you telling me you got 30 pairs of jeans? No, no, I, I, I'll wear like the, the amount of times that jeans are on my body in the winter is probably four times a month. Wait, so what do you wear? Do you just wear basketball shorts apart from that? Uh, you know, like, you know, soccer pants, you know, that kind of stuff. Or like if I'm dressing up, I'm not wearing jeans, right, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. like some black pants or, you know, but it, I probably, I mean, I, I wash my jeans. Like you're not supposed to wash jeans, right? Yeah. I think like I, I wash them like once every, well, if, if I'm being honest, great, great pup, by the way, Thank you. if we're, um, if we're being honest, it's pretty rare for me to have a situation where I'm like, I've been wearing these jeans too much. I'm going to wash them. What usually yeah. happens is I've been wearing them for like two weeks to a month and then I like spill something on them at dinner and I'm like, okay, time to wash these jeans. Yeah, I think that's acceptable. And unless we look at chat and all we see is Dan's game. I mean, it's, it's driving me crazy. We have a sedentary job. Like, do you think people are, uh, people, the, the jean was originally invented so you could wear it while like farming. I think the farmers were doing like 18 hours of hard manual labor. And then they're like, oh, my, well, maybe then they wash their jeans, but <laughs> for mining. But my question is, okay, so you, you live a, I, I wouldn't say sedentary life because you are active. Yeah, but I don't but wear the jeans on the bike. That would be psychotic. Shot, <laughs> my legs would be blue. So probably about two or three years ago, I was obsessed with running. And I'm like, I'm going to run every single day this year. So 365 times. I got to like day 300 and I was like sick as a dog, like right. just yeah. like vomit. And we have a treadmill in the house and it was like 1130 PM. And I'm like, I haven't <laughs> run yet. Dude, I hopped on the treadmill with jeans. I'm like, let's just knock oh, it out. Man. No. You, and I'm like, you just, you just, sometimes you just got to do it. But back to you, 
what are you doing that you're blowing out jeans every six to eight months because you're just sitting in them? I think that like, I think there's a couple of things. I think I have a relatively high pasty to waist ratio for one. I think that puts unique stresses on the gene. And then secondarily, my, uh, when I walk and I do a, a decent amount of walking, my thighs rub together a little bit, maybe weakening the fabric over time. It's very rare, like I, had the, I get the 1950s, like I bend down and hear like and then like I've got the boxers with the hearts on them that are showing from behind. It's always like I'll be sitting down like eating dinner and then I'll look down and you know how your jeans are blue? Okay. The area like in the crotch region, I'll be like, that's almost white. <laughs> and that's how you know like Every subsequent time you wear is like a ticking time bomb. It's like at some point that's going to start to rip open and it's over. So basically you're telling me like your jeans are like if you put a tennis ball into a finger of a latex glove. That is, I would say, not a flattering way to describe it. <laughs> well, like, if your, your thighs are rubbing together? Yeah. I mean, how is that even remotely comfortable? I think it's, you know, it's one of those things where I've just, I've always had it, so it just feels normal to me. And what mm. am I supposed to do? Cut, like, a third of my leg off? I mean, the chat knows about your toe walking, right? Do you think For that sure. has an impact on it? Like if you heel walk, then it may open your gait up a little bit of your hips, and then maybe you got to, I never some room about to breathe. That, I guess I'll <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Let me talk to my doctor. I'll, I'll see if I could. Can... You force yourself to heel walk? No. What do you mean no? Well, we've been through this, right? Like I told you, I had the. They put casts on my legs when I was in the sixth grade. So it was like I couldn't bend my foot to walk on my toe. I had to walk heel toe. And then, like, the idea was that it was going to stretch out the tendon to the point where I could comfortably heel walk. And then, like, yeah. two weeks after the heel walking, or after the cast came off, I was just back on the damn toes. Yeah, but they have better tech than, than plaster, or plaster of Paris now. Do you think so? Okay, there you go. Yeah. Maybe. They can get throw some, some carbon fiber in your shoes and, Essential like, oils. tie them. Yeah, you know, like, tie it into some Wi-Fi and you're good to go. Oh, you, I, I see what you're thinking. It's like something where if I step on my toe, it uh, gives me an electrical zap or something. That's like, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> I mean, but not only that, I'm sure there's like shoes that like are, are inverted heels. Oh, <gasps> that's what you need. Inverted, inverted heels. Inverted. So that heel is on the toe. <laughs> right. You know yeah. what I'm talking? I've never even heard of those well, You know what? I actually feel like, hang on, let me just have the greatest chip in of all time here. Me personally, I think it's that I have some adaptive traits due to walking on my toes and the so-called normal people should adjust to me no, rather than the opposite. Like, how do you run? You don't run heel shots. toe, right? You're going to get like a, you're going to get a bone spur or something like that. You're going to get shin splints. Instead, you run on the pads of your feet. You don't see, if you're watching the 100 meter dash, you don't see Usain Bolt going, you know, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. Okay, they're going with the pitching wedge here. He goes. Oh, he goes really fast. He goes in the hole. Mm. Oh, all right. That was, that was a much better approach than me. Kind of looks like us walking out mm. there. <laughs> but, but so what would you, <laughs> so instead of this, what would you wear on the golf course? Um, what do you say? Well, I guess I would have to buy some clothes because I haven't been golfing. I don't have any golf attire. I could wear, I would wear a polo shirt for sure. Okay. Cause like I've been wearing polo shirts once a week for like, um, I don't know, five years, but, and I, I haven't even been golfing. Let me tell you one thing. I would mix up the footwear game. I would not be wearing <laughs> black loafers with white athletic socks out there. <laughs> that's, it I'm, may not be a fashion Andy, but I don't think that's the appropriate attire for this situation. But I gotta, don't, don't I gotta take... wear dark pants, man. I can't be one of those guys in white jeans. It would just be like, it, it, it would be too distracting. Don't take this the wrong way, but I think, nice putt. Oh! 2012 Ryan would dress like that. I think that's fair, yeah. Like PAX West Ryan. Huge, like, probably a graphic t-shirt, um, boot cut jeans, and then like the bulkiest shoes you've ever seen. You're like a square-toed sneaker from Aldo. Do you, do you still have those? 
those burgundy New Balances? No, I. I mean, if you thought the pants were something, I go through shoes like I probably go through two and a half pairs a year. I just uh, you are like blowing my mind right now. They they can't make an item of clothing that can stand up to my rigorous lifestyle. I mean, how many miles are you walk walking per week? Um, maybe like twenty five miles. And then what about, is it going to change now that you have moved, you think? I don't think so. You're still going to, but don't you walk around to like the grocery store and then now you're going to, what are you going to do, walk around and go to the mailbox or something? No, just still walk to the grocery store. It's just a little further away. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. What happened? We both did the same thing. Why? Well, yeah, I don't know about you. I have a natural tendency to swing a little fast and thus hook it to the left a little bit. Mm. I very rarely get a, a perfect uh, shot. But when it happens, Down. oh, baby. A little too much. All right. Okay. Is have you? I mean, I'm not. I know we've L talked listen, about this. Now that I'm not defending my physiology, my God given physiology here, check out what I'm capable of on the golf course. Okay, get ready for this. Okay. Get get ready for like you're this is a tough shot. You weren't messing around here. Okay, watch this drive. Oh, you got the. It's, it's like almost exactly the same shot. <laughs> <laughs> but it, let me, I'm asking you this and like, don't take this the wrong way. Right, is yeah. your toe walking mm -hmm. a physical thing or is it something that you, it's like a trained thing? I don't know. Hmm. So I, I'll tell you something. I, I told this to chat, but they like hearing the story. Our mutual... Oh, oh! <laughs> oh our mutual like acquantance uh, slash friend wow, small ant yes, also man. is an idiopathic toe walker. Uh, real quick, uh, Siri, what does idiopathic mean? He walks on his toes like I do. Oh, <laughs> what does idiopathic mean? Are you calling small ant an idiot? Mm, not small ant, no. Drama. Myself, maybe a little bit. Get, dra big drama. Get in here. Big Flame emoji. Emoji. <laughs> um, I, apparently, it means without, yeah, without knowable reason. It means I don't know why. There you go. Um, okay. So he, he is the same sort of uh, behavior. He posted a TikTok about it like a year ago and then tweeted about the TikTok and said, TikTok has like diagnosed me as having autism as a result of this. And then he was kind of like laughing about it. And then like three weeks ago, so a year after the original post, he tweeted, okay, TikTok was right. I actually got diagnosed as being on the spectrum. And I saw that and I was like, wait a minute. It's because at, at first I thought we were in the same boat because I'm, people are constantly like, if you have idiopathic toe walking, it's highly associated with autism. And I was like, I don't, I think I just walk on my toes anyway. So that gave me a, the pause and I was like, let's look into the symptoms of this. And I did like a self-assessment online and a lot of the, the behaviors associated with autism are not things that I relate to. You know, I don't really... That you're, that you're aware of. Well, like I, it's a self-assessment test. So like, it's not like they just run your DNA and they're like, you got it. But it'll be things like... You know, I, I really like routine, which is associated with it for sure. But then it's like, do you have trouble maintaining eye contact with people? And I'm like, not at all. Do you have trouble, um, you know, socializing with people or like recognizing how other people are feeling from what they're saying and, and what their body language is like? And I'm like, I don't think so. Like, I, I think I've pretty much got it under control. Um, and I was like, OK, that settles it. I'm not on the spectrum. Then I started watching Love on the Spectrum and uh, a man on the spectrum went on a speed date with somebody and he said, do you mind if I ask when you were born? She said 1997 and he said, oh, nice. That's the same year Men in Black came out. And I said, oh, son of a... <laughs> 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 Maybe I am on the spectrum. Um, 
If so, I mean, then like, I don't know, what would you describe the cause of the toe path or toe walking as being? Is that cause, is it like something I just want to do? Is it something I learned? I don't know. I think that the, the jury is out. Can I just add one uh, potential medical question to the uh, delineating medical diagnosis? Yeah, I mean, you seem qualified for this, so let's do it. Do oh. Nice putt. Does, does the person taking the quiz have a um, golden play button from YouTube? Um, well, two of us did, I guess. Yeah, I mean... Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's necessarily like a... a condition associated with it though it, it i mean might we're, be two, for we're two I for two right now we're two for two right now for being honest well we yeah. don't know for two for two we're two for some number that's probably like you know in the hundreds of millions or something like that oh no i already see myself making this twitter video <laughs> <laughs> he even did the tiger woods <laughs> thing man he tigered on me <laughs> um Chad, I'm not going to ask him why doesn't he just go get tested. That's well, like, hey, why thing. don't you just I'll, make that putt? No, no, I'll be honest with you. I emailed because I was like, you know, I can knock this out. I emailed uh, a clinic in Vancouver and I was like, you know, here's my because they were like, we're accepting new patients. And I was like, all right. I emailed them my story, which is almost exactly the same story that I told you, except they don't know who Small Ant is. Um, <laughs> and then they got back to me and said, Hey, it sounds like you might be a candidate for like an assessment. We're currently booking uh, autism assessments for September 2024. And I closed the email and gave a middle finger to the webcam. I said, <laughs> September 2024, you can eat me. <laughs> Chad, don't don't say Canadian healthcare K Cohen. All right, no current events. Oh, nice nice drive. Yeah, Thank you. Um, Thank you. Speaking of uh, flicking off the computer. Did you, how did things wrap up with the, the moving saga? Uh, I don't, I don't want, I'll give you an update to that on the back channel. I got you, I got you, I got you. But did you leave a scathing review or no? I'll give you an update to that on the back channel. <laughs> he, Chad, he <laughs> did it. And he doesn't want to say it because if he says three words of it, you guys will cross-reference cross it, search Yelp, find him. No, it's then... because like, it, you have to be careful when you're in a situation that could oh, become a legal situation. Slay. Yes, exactly. My man's, my man's is, is bringing out the legal team. Black. I'm not suits, bringing out the legal cases. team. I just don't want to have to bring out the legal team. What's um in in K Kona? We have something called small claims court. Yes. What's it called in in Canada? You're not going to believe this one. <laughs> it's called small no. claims court. You stole it from us. I think you probably stole it from. Sure the United Kingdom, who we also stole it from, is my guess. But you ever realize, like, how messed up it is? Like, you know, we thought about taking them to small claims court, and I guess we still could. But, like, to take them to small claims court is, like, the, the maximum judgment you could get is, like, a few thousand dollars. But, like, to hire a lawyer to advise you if you should take them to small claims court could cost you, like, $250 an hour. Ooh. What a bounce. <laughs> so you you had always you'll end up there's no winning well, i guess lawyer. you could just go without a lawyer but i also don't know enough about the law to be like should i take them to small claims course so i kind of feel like i need to i would like to talk to a lawyer at least wait i uh i was playing new world one time with open void and i ran into one of those oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I was playing an MMO with Open VoIP, and I ran into one of those people. And uh, chat's gonna what is it be like one of those people, people. like a lawyer? What? No, someone who like I I know it's extremely mock ass. I didn't know what it was at the point, at, at the point. But uh, chat said it's like someone who represents themselves as lawyers, but they don't follow the law or something. A it's sovereign uh, citizen. Yeah, I didn't even no. know what that was. <laughs> but I but I ran into someone like that and open VoIP and chat just it was full monk ass. Dude, so would are, you become that? No, that's not even in the same a sovereign citizen is one of those people who's like, it's illegal for you to force me to pay tax because the original tax code says it's supposed to be paid in like precious metals or something like that. Oh my god, what a pun. <laughs> or like oh, so I, I can't pay I don't have to pay tax 
because of the fact that like I didn't give myself a name, like the government is giving me a name that I don't recognize myself as, as a result, you can't legally uh, like get tax from me. I got it. So it's, wait, I didn't tap it in. You didn't have to tap it in because I beat you by a stroke. Oh, um, so it's basically like you live somewhere, but you just don't recognize the laws. Yes. Isn't well, that called being a criminal? Well, legally speaking, <laughs> yes. That. Oh. <laughs> That's why they go to court and then they pull like that rationale and then the judge is like, pay your taxes or we're going to put you in prison. And then they pay their taxes or they go to prison like Wesley Snipes did. <laughs> I, just, I just never knew about that, you know? But, Don't get me wait, wrong, so, I understand the appeal. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got like it'd be like it'd be like us streaming on Twitch and they go to take the percentage and we're like, no, we don't abide by those rules. Yeah, yeah. Like, or like you don't, we, <laughs> we get banned for like TOS and we're like excuse me, my legal name is not Northern Lion. It might not work for you, I guess, but <laughs> <laughs> here's our second shot on the eighth. The other thing is like and it's just like I was talking to my, my brother-in-law about it and he was like, I would take them to small claims court and just like waste their time. I get it. I trust me, I get it. But like, it's also wasting my time. So you're like, you got to weigh that. And like three weeks ago, I was like, my time's worth nothing. I would do it just to like, you know, just because I resent them right now. Now I'm like, I got stuff to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I get your brother's sentiment, but I think what that personally removes is like the space it takes up in your head. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to go take him to court, okay, but you're thinking about it every day. Exactly. You want to, oh, are we going to, you know? It's like, at some point, it's like, sorry if you're a lawyer in chat, but sometimes just, you know, lawyers stay out of lawyer stuff. It made me you know? wish I was a lawyer because I was like, I would love to just send them a letter from a lawyer and be like, give us some money or we're going to ruin your month or, I don't know, your year. But I'm like, I'm not going to pay a lawyer like, you know, 500 bucks to draft a letter. <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> anyway. It's big chipping right here. It is a big chipping. You're not wrong. Rifle shoot. I'm not gonna say he can put out a single Isaac special and recoup the cost 3x. I'm not gonna say that to him. All right. Show some respect. Yeah, I could, I could put out an a Isaac special and then pay all that money to a lawyer just to make an adult that I've never met before feel bad. That seems like a good use of my time. You could just take the money that you made from the Isaac special, put it in the S&P 500, and over a 40-year time scale, get like 7% risk-adjusted returns annually on average. Oh. Mm. Nicely done. Nicely done. Um, have you, uh, like, without getting uh, doxy, but have you settled into, like, the suburban, like, lifestyle? Dude, I love uh, it. Do you, are you you mowing the grass? What do you, like, what's you, Neighbors you fertilizing? Are you air riding? Me? Well, like, we're under, like, water restrictions right now. Um, so we can't, uh, like, you know, water anything so that we have water to like drink and stuff like that. And uh -huh. so, you know, keep the golf courses looking green. But um, apart from that, living like in a more suburban area is crazy. People will be like driving their car while I'm outside. They will like stop their car and roll down the window and be like, hello, welcome to the neighborhood. And I'm like, this is, I used to live in a neighborhood where, uh, literally like you would see your neighbors on the sidewalk and you would just sort of give them a smile like i i didn't know the name i know what our neighbors look like but i didn't know any of their names Don't now i feel like i'm part of a community right now people are commenting on the stuff that i'm buying at the grocery store they're not just looking at their phones all the time they're like hey what do you got there and i'm like this is radicchio and they're like well i didn't never knew what it was i only saw it in the spring mix what is radicchio it's like a the red, six, it's a red the green. six ninja turtle <laughs> Who's who's the fifth Ninja Turtle? Uh, Splintero. Mm, Splintero, yes. Yeah. I remember. It's That's nice, man. Honestly, like if you had asked me, 
10 years ago, if that appealed to me, I would be like, no, that sounds yeah, like hell. But having friend. lived in like an urban environment, I think it's like a, you know, you always crave what you don't have, right? When I was in the urban environment, I was like, I, w I long for like a greater sense of community. But the more people that come together in a weird way is like the more isolated I was. And now that it's a little bit more spread out, I'm like, man, people are like not, they don't have an ambient level of annoyance with everybody else that they come in contact with for like making everything take slightly, take slightly longer. It's kind of nice. You know what I like to call that? What? What it's like to live in Michigan. I believe that. Like everyone's like, hey, how's it going? Hey. Yeah, no, you go. No, you go. Yo, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you later. <laughs> Want to play some euchre? Yeah, I'll see you out there. All right. And then anytime I'm back in like a more dense, and I don't have anything against density for the record, but what a, what a putt. Anytime I'm back in like the, the more urban parts of Vancouver, I'm like, it's crazy out here, man. I, I lived here for so long. And then I see people on the sidewalk are aver averting eye contact with everybody else. Hey, get out of my way, Hong Kong. You, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm jaywalking. Someone tried to hit me when I'm jaywalking. Oh, I'm driving through a stop sign. A pedestrian tried to legally cross Hong Kong. Where everybody's honking at each other. Everybody's in a rush. Uh, what is this shot? <laughs> I, I am, this one <laughs> is not good. <laughs> All right. Also with kids, it totally changes it. Like that's, I'm sure people are sick of hearing it, but like, it's much nicer to be in an environment where like, you know, you're around other families with kids. Please give me a good bouncer. Oh. It could be worse, man. <laughs> yeah, it could be, it could be worse. It could be worse. <laughs> Um, you know what Which, Chad always oh. says to me here is that um, trees are 90% air. So all you have to do is hit the ball into the, into the empty space in the tree. I, I cannot believe. I've, I've told you some whoppers in our time. I cannot believe you believe that. <laughs> they are 90% air. They're not, though. They're 90% hard. Well, if you hit the branch, but if you miss the branch, they're 100% air. Right, the what point about point the trunk? Uh? Mm, the trunk, uh, it's probably only like 30% air. If I had uh, to guess. You're, uh, today must be op opposite day, because that sounds like <laughs> something I would say. Well, think about it, like, especially when you get up into the canopy. Yeah, there's leaves, but there's like a lot of air. And yeah, atoms are like 89%. Someone said 89%. That must be a valid figure. Atoms are like 89% empty space anyway. So that's not even air. And this is your third shot. That's just nothing. What are your thoughts on that uh, South Korean superconductor, LK99? You got any thoughts on the room temperature superconductor? So when I, I'm going to be 100% transparent here. When I saw you tweet that, I thought it was like something that fell off a UFO. <laughs> because because everyone was talking about ufos back then right, i'm like yeah, i don't yeah. know i'm not even going to research it but what is here. a superconductor i don't even know you have you'd have to tell me what it means i have no idea quite frankly i have to, a conductor is something that um allows a current to pass through it so i'm mm -hmm. assuming that a superconductor allows it to pass through it really well is it a real thing is it a meme thing it's it's both simultaneously right now because uh it has been semi reproduced but not at room temperature which smart people tell me is very very important but they've like reproduced it at like negative 260 degrees fahrenheit i don't know how relevant that is but it's also so it's a meme well no it's supposed to be at room temperature it's easier to do it when it's really Listen, I've recently become an expert in this from reading uh, people on Twitter who are experts at it all. Oh, we're so back. Apparently, it's very, it's relatively easier to have something take on superconductive materials or properties, I should say, at uh, really, really low temperatures. So to have one that doesn't require you to be at like. 260 degrees below zero is apparently an enormous physics breakthrough if it's verifiable. 
And who is it? Was this uh, experiment done on TikTok or is this like in a lab? Uh, I, I believe it was done in a lab. The, okay. most How about the most important scientific advance from TikTok is that if you uh, well, place a golf ball behind a piece of paper up. and hold it up to okay. a mirror, the mirror somehow no, still knows that the does. golf ball is there, which I think science is still trying to figure out how the heck the the mirror can know that there's a golf ball there. So let me, here's my answer to that. <laughs> Get some aloe vera. Uh, are we talking about it. the golf ball or are we talking about the superconductor? <laughs> superconductor. Okay, okay. Get some aloe vera, freeze it, and put the, with his the CPU processor in that. Right, okay. What happens when, it, when it heats up, though? It won't. The, the jelly will invert the freezing back. I get it. It has a very it. high thermal um, specific heat capacity. Yes, yeah. exactly. I think that, I don't know if they ever thought about that one. You ever realize how much, uh, I don't want to say dumber, but you, if you got like an A in high school physics, your identity of yourself is that you're very smart. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. And then like, okay. I have a, a bachelor's degree in science. I've read scientific papers. Sure, they're biology, but it's still, you know, you, you get familiar with the verbiage. Even reading like the abstract of this paper about LK99, the room temperature superconductor, I was like, I'm, I'm too dumb to understand what the abstract says, which is about 1% as intelligent as you need to be to design the experiment in the first place. It's very humbling. I got it. Uh, you know where you lost me at? Where? You said you, you said you have a bachelor's of science and you've read plenty of scientific papers. Is that what you said? You didn't read any, any scientific papers in college? Well, I have a master's of science and I've never read one scientific paper in my life. How so, can that so, possibly come to pass? You I never mean, had to do like a, like a literature review or something like that. To get your master's, don't you have to like almost author or co-author some kind of research? You do, unless you go to the heads of the department and say, instead of doing all that thesis junk, can I just take six months of karate uh, with a, a, an Okinawan uh, karate specialist? Oh, and they said, so it's like sure, a Daniel. seminar type deal instead of a thesis. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're like, sure. And, you know. I mean, you beat the six, system. Like, yeah. You know, beat the system, but what, but is the system even worth beating? I'm not even mad at you. I mean, the papers are largely, like, really boring. Ooh. Oh, you piece. I think that they have to be... Okay. Boring might not be the right word, but they don't worry about entertaining the audience. Instead, it's, like, it's very important. But still, like, when you're reading it as, like, a, an undergrad student, you're like, this is boring, man. But then, like, when they turn it into, uh, like... When a real writer gets their hands on it, they're always like, cure for cancer discovered. And then you're like, oh, not really. Here we go now on the 12th. They always <laughs> sensationalize it. I clicked on this article the other day. I'm like a little embarrassed. It's like, and it was from a reputable news site or whatever. I mean, I guess that's its own thing. But it's like, <laughs> scientists have discovered these eight things can add four years to your life. Okay. Number one, number one was exercising. Who would have, okay. Two, <laughs> Number two was get good sleep. Okay. Number three, maintain positive, healthy relationships. Number four, eat uh, eat a proper amount of nutrition. After four, I'm just like... What, okay, what, don't what? leave me hanging. I, those, I already knew those ones. All the, all the other four are like <laughs> exercise 20 minutes a day. Limit the amount of salt. I mean, there's nothing. there was nothing new. It was all just fake stuff. Well, it's not it, it was fake. <laughs> Well, it's, it's not fake, fake stuff. It's like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> but, it's a, but, it's a, but it's a fake article because they just want you to click on stuff you already know. You were looking for something that was like, you <laughs> yeah. know, number seven. If you eat like a handful of walnuts a day, like it'll give Mixed you plus five lemons. Years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was from like I'm not going to say the website, but it wasn't from like little little Timmy's Diet website. It was like <laughs> one of the so major good. news publications. <laughs> you wanted like that that clickbait. Uh, headline that's always like gut doctors recommend you never eat this one thing and it's like uh it's like a tapeworm that's eating an intestine from the inside out yes oh man 
<laughs> but I felt so swindled because I'm like, I expect this if I click on an ad, you know, if I'm reading like The Guardian about, you know, whatever. Justin Bieber and Kim Kardashian in a softball game, you know? Of course, yeah. Right. You won't believe what this celebrity looks like now. They literally <laughs> just look like themselves, but 15 years older. <laughs> That's a good pump. You know what? I haven't seen this ad in a while. Maybe it got like, like they cracked down on it. That was a really good approach. But it was like, there, there would be like a picture of a celebrity and then the headline would be like, gone too soon. Here's how celebrity name died. But then it would be like a celebrity that's still alive. It would be like Sandra Bullock. And you'd be like, did Sandra Bullock die? And I don't click on the ad. I would like open an incognito window and be like, Sandra Bullock. And then Wikipedia is like, she's in 12 movies this year. She's filming like three new uh, bird boxes. Wait, why, did, why would you type in Sandra Bullock in an incognito window? Uh, Cause I don't want the, I don't want Google to then get the cookie that I've been looking at Sandra Bullock. So then they're going to serve me more ads that are like about Sandra Bullock. So, so what is something you're comfortable typing into non incognito Google? Just the unimportant stuff like medical symptoms, you know, financial information, stuff like that. I actually, I use incognito. I would say for like 85% of my internet browsing. Because really? I just don't see why I wouldn't. Like, I, what, what's the calculus on not using an incognito window? There, you get a like, little who, inconvenience because it doesn't have, like, stored passwords or, like, really your, your bookmark bar or something like that. A little inconvenience? That's a lot of convene. To me, that half a second after have to remember to, what password it is, it's 100% worth it. I'm taking us, you, you know, in the big short... Brad yeah. Pitt is like uh, living in a bunker in Colorado using like uh, Telnet to do all of his online communication. I'm yeah. strongly in danger of regressing to that at some point in my life. I now am immediately suspicious of any modern convenience. It's not to say I don't take advantage of them when it seems right, but I'm definitely like I stopped doing. I used to do crosswords at dictionary.com on stream. One day they said, sign in to your Google account to keep doing these crosswords. I said, F you. I'm not signing in. I'm not giving you access to like, I know you're not doing anything with the information, but you don't need to have the, my Google account information. You don't need, it'll know your email address, your contact list, your age, and your, where you live. And I'm like, no, you don't get to know that just for making the crosswords. See, but I take the opposite. If I go to crossword.com and, and I see like, Google login. I'm like, yay, Pog, it saves me so much time. I just click this. And get... <laughs> am, I am I doing something wrong? It's convenient. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think maybe we have like a difference of paranoia, honestly. Like, what's the worst case they're going to do? Well, like, it's just like it's, it's, not their it's not their information to have. Like, I'm that guy now when I go to, if I buy a pair of pants, which apparently I do way too often, they're like, would you like to give us a phone number? And I'm like, no. I'm not, I don't need a phone number to buy pants. People have been doing this at the, at the market square for 2,000 years. It's like when, in the medieval era, you didn't go, go to a tailor and they're like, oh, real quick, what's your phone number? You don't need to have my phone number to buy these pants. Like, what do you, you made them. Yeah, but I yeah. give you legal tender and then I take the pants and I leave and we never see each other again. That's the way it should go. Yeah, but here's, here's why it's important. Six to eight months from now, when you give them their information, they're going to send you a 20% off coupon and be like, hey, Thighs rubbing together, need a new pair of pants, and you're like, yo, thanks for thinking of me. I'll take the I know when I need off. a new pair of pants. Yeah, but they know better. They don't know better. Because I tell this story all the time. I bought a custom fitted suit from Indochino, okay? Ooh. This, this was three years ago, so it doesn't fit very well anymore. And as soon as I bought the suit, they're like, it'll take a week and a half, two weeks for the suit to arrive. In that week and a half to two weeks, they emailed me 14 times to buy a new suit. How smart could the algorithm be in this case? I literally just bought a suit. The only thing, oh, this is an amazing shot. The only thing I don't need right now is a suit. But they're like, hey, we know, we, do, we have your email address. We have your phone number and stuff like that. Uh, you want to buy a suit? And I'm like, of course I don't want to buy a suit. I'm still waiting for the one that you're pretending to custom make for me. But actually it's like being made in uh, overseas right now and then shipped over here. And you're charging me like a 1500% upcharge. How's the suit look, though? 
It looked great until I lost 30 pounds, and now it looks like I'm in the talking heads. <laughs> Which is an aesthetic in its own right, but... You. Oh, this is this one. Well, I think you got me on this one. Sand, just a medium putt here. Now you've got <clears throat> a seven-foot putt. So I'll Good. Nice putt. Thank so you. I'll tell you this. So I, I went to, I actually went to this event, right? The Rocket Mortgage Classic. Right, yeah. Hold on, hold on I got to hit this first. Would you say we're better or worse than the average golfer you saw there? Well, so I watched one hole the majority of the time, right? So you got to see a lot of golfers come through. And I swear to you, I would say like 50 golfers, 40 of them on the regular would miss a six to seven foot putt i'm like this is your job <laughs> and you're missing these like me and Ro like if we took 50 eight foot putts we're sinking 25 of them all day like this is your job how are you not making these putts i think it's just it's just hard right what <laughs> like, you put a ball in a hole well i mean like they're the best people in the world at it and they're not doing that well it's got the the occam's razor is that it's got to be hard I mean, so if I gave you 50 attempts at an eight foot putt, you don't think you can make 20? I, do, I honest with God as my witness, I'm not just saying this to cause an argument. I don't think I would. Oh, you're out of your mind, especially with your DAE math brain. <laughs> you're making you're making 20 all day. I've never I, I mean, I've golfed a few times. I would say putting is the strongest part of my game. Just because when you're a complete novice, driving and approach shots are borderline impossible. At least on the green. I'm like, I've played mini golf, so I, I kind of understand the concept of what I should be doing. But I don't know. Eight, eight foot putt? If it's, just, for you, three, it's just math for you. Three foot putt is no problem. I'm not saying I'd make 25, but I think I'd do okay. Eight foot, I think I'm looking at eight to 12 in the, in the hole. Uh, I I disagree. I think you I think you're cutting your math stuff short. Speaking of which. Oh. oh. <laughs> I mean, 2K. You you couldn't you could, they couldn't render a few rocks for us. It, it's just, <laughs> Dude, this game drives carpet. me crazy. It's like every time you load it up and go to the settings menu, it's like, do you want to buy some uh, VC? And I'm like, no, I, pay, I paid like 70 bucks for the game. I don't want to buy VC to get my dude like a golf visor or something like that. It's crazy. Pretty soon, there, when you buy the VC, there's going to be like a, a tip screen afterwards. How was your service on the, in the in-game store today? 15%. 18%. Pretty good. 20%. Wow. I will say... I am pro tipper, but I took uh, I took my youngest son to a roller skating slash arcade hybrid place. Okay, that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, nice! Okay. And all they had only had like they had people working, but they had point of sale like big iPads. Right. Yeah. And you know, there's someone behind the iPad just to make sure everything's fine. I go to check out, it skips the tip every time and just says thank you, and oh. I was like. And so I'm you like, slid what? him like a ten dollar bill. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I gave him a, a thousand tickets that we won in the, you know, the <laughs> ski ball machine. But I'm like, I, you know, that was kind of a nice change up because normally you're used to getting fleeced for about 20, 20 a pop, and now it's like they skipped it, dude. You I, know? And I'm like, I don't because what do you tip in? You, you tip in the iPad? Are you tipping the iPad? Is that what you're doing? I, so, I would say even like five years ago. Um, I, w I mean, I wouldn't say I'm pro tip. I would say it's the system oh, nice putt, that we were like, I didn't create the system. I was born into mm -hmm. this system and I'm not going to yeah. be the guy who's like tipping is not something we should do. Just pay your workers. But then I don't actually like endeavor to make the workers get more pay. I just stop tipping and put the money in my pocket. But it's gone crazy. And the reason I know it's gone crazy is a personal experience and B Otherwise, nice people always come to me and say, whenever we talk about tipping, I'm not against tipping, but does anybody else think it's gone a little insane lately? It's, it's not the just sovereign citizens anymore. It's normal folks are going, the tipping's getting a little out of hand. I'm going to bring up something Monk asked just because I didn't click on the headline, but I think I read something somewhere 
where the maker out of the makers of I think South Park created a restaurant where they just paid a really good wage to the waiters and no tipping but I never clicked on it did you ever read about that and then the it was like one thing the bartender says you should never do when not tipping at the South Park restaurant pull down your pants <laughs> I never I, it, clicked that. It blew I my mind. On it. Like I, so there's a couple that were crazy for me lately. When when I went to Subway like six weeks ago, and they asked me for a tip at the end of the Subway order, I was like, "That you, here's your 15. Right, percent It's the last time you're ever going to see me." The, the second one, I went to a liquor store and bought a six pack of beer, and then the debit machine asked me if I wanted to leave a tip. Now, it didn't say, it wasn't like, hey, leave a tip, but it was like, if you would like to leave a tip, here's a 10, 15, and 20% button. And I was like, you didn't do anything. You didn't make the beer. You didn't <laughs> ship the beer. You own a freezer and a cash register. I went to the back. <laughs> I got it myself. I brought it to the front, and then I'm paying for it. Like, why would I give you? So I hit zero because I was just sort of like flabbergasted. I'm like, what do you want? You didn't do anything. I'll, I'll tip you for doing a little, but this is nothing. <laughs> What's the minimal level of physical activity you will tip? Like, what do they have to do? I mean, I would, I would, if I got like a drip coffee at a coffee shop, I would tip them 10%. What's a drip coffee? You know, like a, a coffee. Like, like a it's, normal it's, coffee. Yeah, it's like one where they just go up to like a carafe and pour it into a cup or something like that. Yeah, so they're they're physically doing something. Yeah, or like okay. yesterday, I got a sandwich um, at a at a local sandwich place. I do want to say, I hate to say this, it was worse than Subway. I'm not going back <laughs> to Subway, but I'm not going back to this place either. Uh, What's I, the name of the place? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, so I got the sandwich, and uh, wait, well, I, I should say I ordered it. When I ordered it, she pulled out like a pre-made sandwich that was in the cooler and then put it in like a toaster oven. And I was like, okay. And then pulled it out and handed it to me. And I, I tipped 10% on that even still. I was like, you know, you, you, it's just, that's manners, I guess. Did you make, when she reached into the freezer, did you make a face? It was kind of like, I expected them to just take the, the ingredients and then assemble it there. But I was like, oh, you made this at like 6 a.m. and now you're... Like, it's just a, it, it's a slight difference, but it's a, it's a difference. <laughs> oh. So when I was at that, um, was at that, that roller skating place, a roller rink, yeah, yeah. Uh, they had like, they had like a little uh, kitchen. And then you can get like pizza and nachos. I'm like, oh, nachos sounds good. You know, and, and like, I know, look, I'm at a, it's a, it's a roller rink, right? I'm not expecting like yeah, five star yeah. nachos. I can imagine. But though. she, so the nachos were, they gave me like a clear bag. So like a sealed clear bag of corn chips, fine. But then, you know, those racks that they put um, Subway bread on? Yeah. She pulled that out and pulled out like a sealed cup of cheese that was manufactured by like some company and i just like i'm like okay it's not what i thought it was and like the first four ingredients were like soybean soybean oil soybean dextralose soybean sucralose <laughs> and i'm like these aren't really nachos and no, no like, toppings whatsoever it was just the cheese and the no chip. No, no i was hoping you know i was hoping for like the cup and then there's the machine where you hit the button yeah you know what is that movie nachos I would call those like 7-Eleven nachos. Yeah, like I, that would have been acceptable to me. Ouch. It's amazing that it can get like even worse than that. Yeah, but I mean, they didn't Bit even have the, the cheese in the warmer for you. <laughs> it was like pre-packaged. Room, room temperature nacho <laughs> cheese. That was not even like in the ballpark. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, a little too much on there. Here's hey, I meant to ask you, like, I raided you like a week or two ago, and you were playing like a Stephen Hawking simulator. What, what were you doing? <laughs> the, wait, are you talking about um, the banished vault? I, whatever I, I was it was, you're talking about atoms. And then I would like, we'll get one unit of selenium and then take that back to this planet. We need seven fuel units and stuff like that. 
Yeah. Basically, that was like a board game, uh, like a, a, a European style board game that was turned into uh, a, a digital toy. And I enjoyed it immensely. What can you enjoy? <laughs> did, did, did Chad enjoy it? They seem to have a, a pretty decent time. The, and honestly, like the environment in the chat was pretty good. The only reason I, I haven't played it again on stream is because it's like, it's a lot of thinking. So like mm. playing three hours of that, at the end of it, I was like, I'm glad I did that, but I don't think I'll do it again for a while. Can you win? I won, but it's like, it's, oh. it's more of like a campaign sort of situation. So I beat like the third scenario or something like that. Let's see what his second shot mm. looks like. Speaking of campaigns, yeah, we're I'm not playing Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> I think that you know, I don't you, you know that I like to be a contrarian, but this is my honest It's not like I have an I wait to have an opinion until I see what other people's opinions are and then I take the opposite. It's just that my typical opinion tends to sometimes run counter to the norm. The fact that like so and yesterday it had crazy viewership, don't get me wrong, and obviously there's some outliers that are crushing it like from an analytics standpoint, and a lot of viewers enjoy watching yeah, it, by the happens. way. Again, I'm not just saying this because Macros is here and he worked on the game. <laughs> Macros, Julian Avilsgaard worked on it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I saw him tweet that, but I, didn't, I thought it was just from some indie game or something. I'm just saying that I think it's, it's one of those, it's like, you know what it is? Is I, I, I would equate it to like somebody being really excited to like run a marathon. And they come out like really hard in the first two or three miles of the run. And then buckle in, Buster, because you got another 23.2 miles to go. Like you haven't even gotten started. You had, you had a great stream day one, spent four hours making your character, got, got to watch two cutscenes do one battle, new record viewership. That's great. And I'm genuinely happy for you. Call me in a month and a half. When you're halfway through Act 2 of 4 and the viewership is dwindling and Chad is crickets and you're saying things like, what's your favorite fast food restaurant, Chad? And people are coming to the stream like, hey, what did I miss? And they've missed like 40 hours and they're like, who's this half lizard sorcerer guy? And you're like, I'm just saying. And by the way, I've, I've been slandered because we never finished uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, people keep saying like, oh, it's just not NL's type of game. I, I love Divinity Original Sin 2. I played the first half of the game through with Mathis, and then we were like, this thing's too long to finish and nobody's watching it. And then we ran it back with Team Unity and we played half of it again. And we said, this is a great game. Well, maybe three of us said, this is a great game, but uh, it's too long and nobody's watching it. <laughs> so I've, I've been down this road not once, but twice. <laughs> Which is why I'm I'm here to say like I'm I'm stoked that for the gamers oh <clears throat> for the gamers I'm stoked for Baldur's Gate three for the viewers I'm simply saying be patient seeing Super Auto Pets next week <laughs> <laughs> so I, this is how I know marketing works right. Like, I see everyone playing Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate's tweets, you see pictures, you see action, you see dice flying around. I'm like, all right, like, I want to check this thing out. Go to YouTube, type in Baldur's Gate 3 gameplay trailer, three seconds of gameplay, I'm good. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, you just don't, you don't, you don't need it. Don't I don't need yourself. it. Like, if you, I mean, you didn't like Original Sin 2, or at least you were kind of like tired of it by the time we said, let's not play this anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I really... The problem for me is I... Oh, hello. <laughs> the problem for me is I really like the combat, but it's frustrating to play it online because if you ever skip any dialogue, people are like, oh, that's just NL. He hates lore. I don't know. Meanwhile, like, I, I have no problem watching, like, a Death Stranding cutscene for 90 minutes and just becoming, like, a digital react Andy. It's just like you walk into a tavern and someone you've never met before is like, here's nine minutes of discourse about, like, a little goblin boy stole a loaf of bread from my store. Can you go get it back? And if you're ever like, come on, come on, come on, people are like, he hey, whoa, he does, if you don't even like this game, why would you keep playing it? It'll drive you crazy, man. People, you'd be like enjoying a game, 
And then 10 minutes in, like five people in chat will be like, um, wow, let's take bets on until how long before he cans this one. And you're like, well, OK, let's pay out the casino right now, because obviously you're not having a good time. Let's see. Like, I, this, is just, this is just one streamer's opinion. What if you set the expectation that they're just going to hear the space bar slammed multiple times anytime there's text on the screen? Mm, I mean, I think that would help, but I don't know. I've kind of been doing that for like 12 years and <laughs> at the same time, people, people can't help themselves, man. Hey, I know you don't want to do a side quest uh, right now, but do you ever consider this one side quest is different than the other side quest? This one's really, oh, oh, you're going to do the side quest with combat? No, no, no. Go talk to, we're going to spec one point into animal husbandry so you can speak to the cat outside of the tavern, and then you'll get a dialogue option that's really funny and completes the quest for you. <laughs> no, I'm all for it. Like, if I ever had a desire, oh... Uh to play like real life D&D, I think I would just boot that up for a couple hours instead. You know what I mean? I, for sure. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm, I'm pro Baldur's Gate 3, just for the record, or I haven't played it, but I'm pro Divinity Original Sin 2. And if I was in the 10th grade, like I would, it would probably be my favorite game of all time. That it would be like the right place, the right time. I would, uh, beat the game. I would say this is the greatest game ever made. And uh, if ever anybody was like, I don't think I would really like it, I would engage in ad hominem attacks insulting their intelligence and tell them to go back to something <laughs> that they were having fun with, like Candy Crush or something. I would question their gamer cred. This one's tracking. Oh! Just a little too much power. Look, I don't want to, I don't want to count the chickens before they're squeaks. But uh, if you if you wouldn't mind shooting that Twitter video in horizontal <laughs> format, horizontal. How old are you? <laughs> All right, that's a fast green. Horizontal. Oh, oh really? And if they sink this, this is for the win. This this is for. <laughs> Not squeaks. Nice putt. Nice putt. Finished up. Ryan? Well, That's the week! I thought that was hole 17! No, 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 no. It was, you know, it was a gentleman's agreement. I think that the, the people got what they came for is a competitive back and forth experience. Um, I will also just make sure the Twitter video is saying that my my roguelike tier list, uh, in particular Slay the Spire is correct. I'll take it in 60 FPS too. You don't have to get crazy with it. I don't it. know how to do that on my phone. I have an Android. Does it even do that? I'll tell you, when I tweet this video, I'm going to do that thing that people do um, when they start getting bullied. I'm going to set it to like only people that I mention can reply to this and then <laughs> send it out just to my, just to my circle. I get it. It was uh, that was it was a competitive match, Ryan. Good it game, was a uh, good game. Good game. Good game. What do you uh, what do you got going right now? Beats me, brother. I don't know. I'll Wait, figure it little out. Little sap. Little sap. Mm, I don't know. I'll figure it out. It's only ten thirty. We got plenty of time today. All right, Ryan Gary. It was a fun one, man. Good catching up. And I will be looking at my DMs for your uh, back wire on the moving situation because I am waiting with bated breath. Okay, I will send it to you after you're not live so that you don't <laughs> accidentally put it up on the screen. <laughs> All right. All right, man. I'll talk to you. All right. Later. Later, later. Chat. I'm not chat. When you take a phone call or uh, receive a phone call, do you... Are you the person who hangs up or the person who waits for the other person to hang up? I am the I am the hang upper without a doubt. Wow, how can everybody Well, actually that makes sense. I guess two people can be hang uppers. The what you don't want is two people that are waiting for the other person to hang up because then it's always like, "Bye, bye. Okay, see ya. All right, have a good one. Bye. All right, talk to you later. Bye." Like the the only way to get around that is to hang up. And I try to wait for, like, I'll say, okay, like, I'm going to let you get going. And then I wait for them to say bye. But sometimes I do end up hanging up mid-bye. But I think that's more due to, like, telecommunications latency. That